Hi, my name is Mark McCaslin. I'm the president of Forge Genetics International in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We started a project with uh, Monsanto in, in 1998 to uh, put the Roundup Ready gene in, in alfalfa. Uh, we were deregulated. The Roundup Ready trait in alfalfa was deregulated in 2005 by USDA, EPA, and, and FDA. Uh, and we went in the market in August 2005. The first Roundup Ready alfalfa seed was sold. Uh, it was sold in 2005, 2006, and early 2007. Uh, until February 2007 when a judge, a federal judge in San Francisco uh, decided that uh, there was an additional level of environmental review required, ordered that an EIS be conducted and put a stop sale on Roundup Ready Alfalfa pending the completion of that EIS. So the good news is uh, draft EIS has been published for well along the, the process of getting that environmental review completed and we're anxious to get back on the market. My name is Ben Curdy and I'm a uh, dairy farmer for Region 80, Region 80 in the Land O'Lakes system of uh, uh, milk production and I also use uh, cropland uh, products from, and, uh, for the system of Land O'Lakes. Uh, I also grow Roundup Ready alfalfa. Uh, my, my, da my dairy farm consists of uh, 3,000 milk cows and we farm about 1,122 acres which 355 acres is Roundup Ready alfalfa. Uh, we put the uh, alfalfa in at the, when they first introduced it in back in 2005. Uh, I have three fields of alfalfa that are in their fourth year, and I have one field of alfalfa that's in its fifth year. And uh, it's very, very good alfalfa. The production levels are really very high still. In fact, we're considering because Roundup Ready has a situation that it hasn't been re-released to keeping that field in it, into its sixth year and the other three into their fifth year until we can get this product released back on the market. Well, one of the reasons that Roundup herbicide is so popular, it's actually the most popular herbicide sold in the world today, is that it's, it's very efficacious. So it's got very broad spectrum weed control, it controls uh, a very broad spectrum of weeds, uh, which makes it unusual. Uh, it's also uh, the, in, in use with uh, Roundup Ready alfalfa, it also gives extraordinary crop safety. So Roundup applied to Roundup Ready alfalfa, there are uh, absolutely no impacts on, on, the alfa on the Roundup Ready alfalfa plant. And that's really a key feature because most of the herbicides that are used to control weeds in alfalfa today do have some crop injury. So when you compare a Roundup system with, uh, with the conventional weed control, in most cases we see an increase in yield because of increased crop safety. With conventional alfalfa, there's two things that happen. You're going to use harsher chemicals to keep the weeds under control and yet they all have longer residual times before you can do cutback. You're going to be making more passes in your fields to put these herbicides on during different times of the year. With Roundup Ready you're using glyphosate or Roundup as a trade name but glyphosate as a general name. You spray it you're in the field the next day if you want to be, or the two days or whatever, you can mow back. Um, if you're spraying a pesticide, for example, let's say you have a ligus or an aphid situation in your field, you can put the glyphosate in, in the pesticide at the same time, and you, you, one application does two things, herbicide and pesticide at one time. So you're lowering your carbon front, footprint. It's just a lot more environmentally safe and a lot less carbon being transferred from, from uh, mechanization out in the field. So the combination of better weed control, better crop safety, uh, result uh, almost always in, to growers in, in uh, increased yield and increased quality. In fact, we did a survey of, of, of growers in 2008 on asking about their experiences with Roundup Ready alfalfa during the succeeding uh, two to three years that they, had, uh, that, that they had grown Roundup Ready alfalfa and asked about a comparison of that Roundup, their Roundup Ready experience compared to conventional alfalfa on their same farm. And uh, on average, across the whole country, growers reported uh, a, an increase in income of $125 per acre. Uh, so that's a benefit of, of yield of the Roundup Ready system versus conventional. The first cuttings of the alfalfa, for the first years, you're probably going to do a ton and a half, ton and a quarter acre in our area. But we're still staying at a ton 10 and a ton and a quarter, and we're in our fifth and sixth years on some of this alfalfa. So the, the actual value to us is even higher, especially the quality side. Uh, when you have uh, uh, grasses or weeds introduced into alfalfa, that's what costs you 
A, your stand, and B, your, your value of your feed, the relative value of the feed, because it's got, it's got weeds in it. Weeds have no feed value. Alfalfa has the, seed, the feed value. Well, if you can keep them out and keep your productivity there, then it even creates even higher value for you. So the alfalfa hay that's produced in the United States goes to one of three markets, really. The largest by far, about 95% of the total, is the domestic hay market. So that's hay that's uh, produced uh, and fed in the United States, uh, primarily to dairy uh, and, and beef cattle, but to uh, so, some other animal species as well. The, 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 the second largest market would be export. Uh, hay that's produced in the United States and exported. Japan is our largest export uh, uh, market, but uh, along the eastern, eastern Rim, other countries as well. That's about four or five percent of the market, and less than one percent of the market today is organic alfalfa that's fed to uh, organic, to, fed to the cows for organic milk production. So all of those markets are important. Uh, some of those markets are, are more or less sensitive to uh, GMO traits, and we recognize that. So the question comes up sometimes, uh, does the introduction of Roundup Ready Alfalfa jeopardize some of those other markets, export market, organic market, et cetera? So I think the simple answer to that is no. So the, the Center for Agriculture, Science, and Technology put out a publication in 2008 uh, that was a peer-reviewed scientific uh, paper that went into great detail about gene flow and alfalfa mitigation strategies effect on other markets. And their conclusion was that coexistence of Roundup Ready alfalfa with these other markets is not only possible, but probable with basic stewardship uh, principles. So uh, I think it's important to realize that uh, there's, a, there's about 25 million acres of alfalfa planted in the United States. Greater than 99% of that is alfalfa that's, that's produced for hay. We have many growers in our area that have Roundup Ready alfalfa and conventional alfalfa, and we don't see any situation where there's any crossover or anything like that. Our practices are to cut it 28, 30 days, and that's where we cut it. It, doesn't, it barely goes even in the flower when we start cutting this hay, uh, and the same thing as goes for the conventional guys. So if you got Roundup Ready next to conventional, it takes even 60 days, and everybody's mowing their hay. It's 28 to 32 days anyway. So the chances of this happening are so remote. So again, you have to remember alfalfa is a forage crop. It's harvested as a forage, not as a grain crop. It does not normally go to seed. So in 99% of the acres, the probability of gene flow from one hay field to another is virtually nil. So that's, 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 the, that's the report of the, uh, of the CAST publication and the scientists that, that conducted that research. I think it's also important to realize that when Judge Breyer put an injunction on future sale of Roundup Ready alfalfa in 2007, he allowed existing acres of alfalfa hay and seed production to stay in. So there are roughly 250,000 acres of alfalfa hay production that were in when the injunction was placed. There's, many of those are still in today. Over, over the three year period, over those 250,000 acres, there has never been one incidence or report of gene flow from one hay field to another. It just doesn't happen. So gene flow does happen in, in, in alfalfa seed production. Uh, it happens in uh, conventional seed production, it happens in GMO seed production, and we know how we can manage it, you, uh, primarily by, by mandating uh, uh, the, uh, the separation distance or the isolation distance from one field to another. So there's a myriad of scientific studies that, that have been conducted that tell us how much isolation is required to manage uh, gene flow in alfalfa seed production. Those are reported in detail in the CAST publication I talked about earlier and are embodied in the National Alfalfa and Forage Alliance, NAFA Best Practices for Roundup Ready Alfalfa. So those best practices have been adopted by the industry uh, and are uh, the rule for Roundup Ready seed production going forward. So the fact is, the industry has worked very hard to develop stewardship programs to, that ensure coexistence. We work with third parties like uh, uh, state certifi seed certifying agencies with uh, NAFA I talked about. Uh, coexistence is possible, it is working, and the industry remains committed to making this work. So this is also a big deal for, not just for alfalfa producers, but for American farmers, and I think the general public as well. If you look at population projections on a global basis, the forecast is we're gonna need to double food production in the next 20 years uh, to feed the world's population. We're not going to do that by doubling land. Uh, the most suitable land for agriculture is already in agricultural production. Uh, we're going to get there by increasing yields. Doubling yields in 20 years is going to be a challenge. And the only way we're going to get there is by, is by increasing yields. A cornerstone of that is going to be by using technology. We need to be 
more efficient at producing more food on fewer acres. I think that's a fact. So I think related to that is the issue about how do we keep U.S. farmers competitive. Uh, we don't have the cheapest land in the world. We don't have the cheapest labor in the world. Uh, what's kept American farmers competitive to date is, is they've been very efficient at producing very high yields. And again, a cornerstone of that has been technology. So I think in closing, this is about giving farmers the right to use safe, beneficial technology to increase profitability on their farms.